What's up, my people? It is your boy, AMG here. And today we are talking about My Hero Academia and Quirk Evolution. Now, a term you're going to have to remember is secondary mutations. And today I'll be talking about that in this video. So let's hit it. Now, in chapter 226, we see Himiko Toka. She is able to turn into someone when she ingests their blood. So, basically, she is a shapeshifter. Now, we see in this chapter, she is actually able to take on their abilities, which is something she was not able to do before. And we can kind of call that a secondary quirk. Now, the person she turns into is Ochoko, which we all know she has the power of gravity. So, levitation, making something lighter, making something heavier. That's the power that she was able to use in this chapter. And then in 227, we see Shigaraki. She, he normally has to put five fingers on a person before they disintegrate. In this chapter, he has kind of a range of effect. Like he has a mid-range attack where he can actually make the people disintegrate without touching him now. Now, that could be that is because he was fighting Gigantomachia. Both of them were. And they kind of just upgraded the power and got better at using them because they were in a stressful situation. Kind of like hockey from One Piece. Now, in One Piece, if you want to get your hockey built up, you have to be in very stressful situations using it and be kind of on dust door. Like the more uh, harder battles you fight in, the stronger your hockey will get. So that can equate to the same thing that they're doing right now, and that's who's why the fire got stronger. Or, from my thoughts, it could be like how mutants are in X-Men in Marvel Comics. Now, X-Men is obviously a Marvel comic I just stated. It used to be a cartoon, X-Men Evolution, and it is actually, you know, movies that Fox, you know, makes. Now, in X-Men, their powers, they usually have one mutation, so like one quirk, like everybody else in My Hero Academia. They have fire, levitation, uh, they're psychics, they have hard skin, you know, like people in My Hero Academia. Well, in a second mutation, like for example, I'll use Iceman, because he's one of the well, most well-known X-Men, and also he was one of the founding members. Iceman, his mutation was, he was able to, you know, turn into ice. He can use all kinds of ice powers. He can, you know, just have ice come in his body. He can materialize it out of nowhere, basically. And after, you know, almost being on death's door, he got a second mutation, which his whole body got encased in ice. And now it's like an ice armor. Before he could turn it on and off, now it is permanent. So it can't go on and off unless he gets someone like, I guess you could say Rogue, who can take people's powers, and she would have the power for a while. That's kind of a thing that a second mutation is. It's a, you know, a development of your quirk either be good or bad. Now, in Himigo Toka's case, that was seems like it would be good because she would be able to use her powers. The problem might be if she uses the power and she doesn't know how to use it, that could be the bad part. Now, other people, if they get the second mutation from doing hard-fought battles, that they might actually get it and it might be bad. Now, this is not the case. Like, we don't know if everybody's going to get a second mutation or if these are second mutations. But we've seen in chapter 158 where they were talking about how everybody's getting their quirks and everything. And how Quirk started off, they said it was a rat who carried a virus and it, you know, got carried around the world. And that has, is how everybody got their quirks in the first place. But we've seen in the chapters of where Class A and Class B were doing, you know, their combat tests against each other, that the first one for all user was talking about Quirk Singularity, where Quirk's are going to get to a certain point where they're going to be so powerful that the people will not be able to control them. Because think about it, if two married people get together and then they have a kid, but they both have powerful quirks, those quirks are going to combine and become stronger and stronger and more powerful, just like Deku's quirk, which is passed down. His quirk started off as a quirk that just accumulated. Then he got, you know, the second one for all, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, you know, all those. You just pack them in together. You have all these people that you're getting their power, their strength, and everything into you. So they get to a point where it's too strong for them. Like 
all like all might's 100% could not be Deku's 100%. Like all might's 100% could be Deku's 50% because it's growing stronger. We don't know if that's the case, but from one for all, from what he told us, the original user, that could be true. Now, if everybody gets a second mutation, that might be horrible because they would have to relearn how to use the quirk because it might change the way they activate it or the way they use it in the first place. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually a thing or not. It's just kind of a thought that came off the top of my head from being a comic book nerd and an anime nerd. So, like the video if you like the video. Comment down below if you guys have anything to say because I really want to know what you guys think about it. Do you think these are secondary quirks? Do you think these are just quirk evolutions? What do you guys think they are? Now, comment down below, like, and subscribe, because I do videos of My Hero Academia every time a chapter comes out, and I'll talk about the anime when it comes back. My name is AMG, and the anime, manga, gaming is all that. And I'm out, people. Peace.